Good afternoon, my name is Rafael Espinal and I'm the chair of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. I'm joined today by my colleague Peter Ku from Queens, who's a member of the committee. Today the committee will be hearing testimony on the topic of gas stations. We will also be seeking feedback for a related bill from Councilmember Mizell. Intro Bill Number 164 in relation to conducting a study on the decline of number of gas service stations in the city and exploring methods to prevent their further decline. The first gas station in the county opened in Pennsylvania in 1913. The gas stations of today have developed into convenience stores selling food, tobacco, and beer. However, they are still responsible for selling 80% of the fuel consumed in the United States, which is 5% of all consumer spending. In New York, gas stations have had a checkered past with the industry having a reputation for being a hotbed for organized crime and corruption. During the 80s and 90s, more than a dozen individuals were indicted for running a multi-million dollar tax evasion scheme using bootleg gasoline and a similar scheme was uncovered as recently as 2006. With new techno technological developments, consumers now face different types of scams and deception. For example, the credit card readers at fuel pumps are particularly susceptible to skimmers that wirelessly capture and copy the card details of users. Each year, consumers are defrauded out of millions of dollars because of such scams, and the issue has become so prolific that the Secret Service has been investigating gas stations across multiple states. Consumers can also be defrauded by gas station attendants charging customers added fees for paying with credit, even if they are paying with cash, or providing regular gasoline to customers who intend to buy premium gas. Although most people don't think of New York City as a driving city, about half of the households owned cars as of 2016. Similarly, the city has experienced a massive increase in the number of app-based for hire vehicles. There were more than 100,000 as of 2017. Despite the clear need for gas stations, parts of New York City are experiencing severe fuel deserts as gas stations are being sold and redeveloped. If current trends continue, gas stations in New York City could soon become a relic of the past. We look forward to hearing today from the administration, business and industry representatives, and other interested stakeholders on how we can mitigate some of these pressures on the gas station industry. Uh, before I call on the administration to testify, uh, I do have uh, a piece of testimony from my colleague, Alan Mizell, who is a sponsor of the bill that we are also hearing and overseeing today. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna read a statement. It starts with the passing of this bill will require the Department of Consumer Affairs to execute a study to investigate and research the factors that contribute to the declining quantity of gas service stations in the city. New York State has seen a 75% decrease in number of service stations just from a decade ago. This decrease is becoming more noticeable, especially in areas such as Brooklyn and Queens. One prime example of this decline is Manhattan, as the number of service is severely limited. Motorists that are traveling to and from the city are finding the need to drive into the outer boroughs and even neighboring cities to refuel their tanks. There are a few very service stations available, and the ones that are available are charging premium prices for gasoline. According to Ralph Bombardier, the executive director of the New York State Association of Service Stations and Repair Shops, the premium pricing is a reflection of the high rental and lease fees that these service stations are dealing with. Additionally, Mr. Brombardier stated that the federal, state, and city regulations for service stations are very complex. Therefore, many prospective service stations would turn down the opportunity of establishing their own business since navigating the regulations are quite difficult. The results of this study will be able to identify the factors that are primarily causing the decline, how this decline may be affecting the local areas, residents, and our constituents, as well as recommendations on how to deal with the decline. By being proactive on this issue, it may, be, it may, it may very well preserve the gas station, station industry and better the quality of the life of uh, citywide. I very, I very much appreciate Rafael Espinal and the committee <laughs> taking out this important legislation. I am thankful to the chairman for his leadership. Thank you, Alan Mizell. Um, so with that said, I would like to call uh, the administration to testify uh, and uh, the committee staff will administer the oath. Do you swear to tell the truth to the best of your knowledge? Thank you. You may begin. Good morning, Chair Espinall, uh, Councilmember Ku, members of the committee. My name is Casey Adams, and I am the Director of City Legislative Affairs for the New York City Department of Consumer Affairs. 
I would like to thank the committee for the opportunity to testify today on behalf of Commissioner Laura Lee Salas regarding DCA's role in the regulation of gas stations and Introduction 164-2018, a bill that would require DCA to study and make recommendations on the gas station industry. I will first discuss DCA's role in regulating gas stations before turning to Intro 164. DCA does not license or permit gas stations. We do, however, enforce several laws governing this industry. DCA's jurisdiction over gas, station falls, gas stations falls into two main categories. First, state weights and measures requirements enforced by DCA under a delegation from the state, and two, local requirements related to signage, price posting, disclosure, and record keeping, among other things. DCA is the Director of Weights and Measures for the City of New York and enforces several requirements under that authority. DCA is charged with enforcing a state law mandate that all commercial gas dispensing devices be inspected and tested for functionality and accuracy at least once a year. Inspectors also check to ensure that, among other things, pumps meet state required specifications, fuel grade and content are properly disclosed, required safety equipment is installed and functioning, and proper records of deli deliveries, inventory, and sales are maintained. DCA also collects fuel samples from each station, which are sent to state-approved labs to test for required chemical content in the fuel. Both state and local law impose labeling, price posting, and disclosure requirements on gas stations. DCA inspectors check pump signs to ensure that prices and product specifications are accurate, accurately and clearly disclosed, and that meters accurately record the amount of fuel dispensed and reflect the posted prices at point of sale. DCA inspectors will also check any store or mini-mart section of a station, if present, for compliance with general retail laboring, labeling and price posting requirements. Local law also regulates the form and content of curbside signs used by gas stations. Curbside signs are often the most visible part of a station and are an important way for these stations to attract customers. Laws and rules enforced by DCA ensure that these signs clearly and accurately disclose prices and products so that customers can make decisions about which gas station to use and that they aren't surprised by fees or charges after they fill their tank. A business owner who opens a gas station must contact DCA to schedule an inspection of their gas dispensing devices. <coughs> DCA has a dedicated petroleum unit that operates citywide to fulfill inspection requests and respond to complaints. Pumps that are found to be inaccurate or non-functional may be condemned by DCA and wired shut until a licensed repairer fixes the problem. Based on a review of publicly available and internal enforcement data, we believe that there are about 730 gas stations operating in New York City today. In fiscal year 2018, DCA received about 370 complaints related to gas stations, inspected almost 7,200 pumps at about 1,000 in attempted inspections, and issued about 120 violations under all the laws and rules described in my testimony earlier. The most common complaints were that a business has overcharged a consumer or misrepresented the price of a product, and the most common violations issued were for missing or incorrect disclosures or signs, or for uninspected, faulty, or non-functioning pump. For the past two fiscal years, the Mayor's Management Report showed a 99% weights and measures compliance rate for gas station pumps. I will now turn to Introduction 164, which requires DCA to conduct a study of the number of gas stations in the city, and if that number has declined in the past 10 years, make recommendations to stop or reverse the decline. DCA understands and appreciates Council's concern about a decline in the number of gas stations available to New Yorkers. As this bill moves forward, we would appreciate the opportunity to work with Council to find the right agency to conduct such a study. Any potential decline in the number of gas stations is likely related to factors outside the scope of DCA's jurisdiction, such as real estate prices, neighborhood development, and larger ac mag macroeconomic trends, including the price of oil and the growing importance of electric and alternative fuel vehicles. DCA's regulatory role in and expertise on this industry does not equip us to undertake the broad scope study and recommendation development process contemplated by this bill. Of course, DCA is pleased to assist wherever our experience is relevant to the questions raised by this proposal. We look forward to working with the Council to identify a workable path forward on this bill. I'd like to thank the committee for the opportunity to testify today, and I'm now happy to answer any questions you may have.
Thank you, Casey. Uh, we also have been joined by Carol, um, Karen Calvus from Queens and Brad Lander from Brooklyn. Uh, I usually like to give my colleagues the opportunity to ask questions first, so if anyone has a question. Okay. All right, so um, in your testimony, I guess you, you do, you do uh, recognize that they, there has been uh, a decrease in gas stations, correct? Uh, what I can say is that anecdotally, our inspectors do report that there have been fewer stations to inspect over the past few years. I just want to be careful um, about how we talk about that because, as I mentioned, we don't license or permit those stations. Mm -hmm. So it's not, we don't think it's an exact number, but anecdotal evidence suggests that the number has decreased in recent years, yes. Have you seen a, a decrease or increase in complaints? We, complaints, no, have remained about steady and on the, the same topic over the past few years. And what usually are the are the, the topics for those complaints? So as I as I mentioned, the most common complaints are misrepresentation or overcharging. Uh, but I want to be clear that that complaint uh, in our data could correspond with overcharging at the pump for fuel, or overcharging or misrepresenting misrepresent within the mini mart attached to the gas station. Because when our inspector goes out. Uh, they are not only looking for compliance with weights and measures and gasoline-related laws and rules, but also with general consumer protection law uh, violations. Yeah. I, I, I have one pet peeve with gas stations, right? And it's usually um, when you go to the pump and decide to use your credit card or your debit card, uh, depending on whether you, you – so what happens is when you use your credit card, they, they charge you a higher fee, right? And sometimes it's clear they're going to charge you a higher fee. Mm -hmm. Uh, but sometimes when you use your credit card, they don't charge you a higher fee. Or if you use your debit card, they might charge you the, ga the cash price. Or, you know, it's, it's just a confusion. It's kind of, it feels like it's, you're playing, uh, you know, Russian roulette with, with, with the machine. You're not sure what you're actually going to get charged mm -hmm. uh, because each gas station has a different policy for how they're going to charge the specific card, mm -hmm. right? Uh, is DCA um, able to um, require, let's say we pass legislation mm -hmm. to require certain signage on the pump uh, kind of notifying the consumer uh, what price they would pay depending on the method of payment they decide to use? So obviously I'd have to review any potential legislation before I could have an opinion on it, but I, what I will say is that we recognize that problem, and the as a result, the DCA rules now require that the roadside sign, um, if, well, if different prices are charged for cash or credit, both prices must be disclosed on that sign. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are, you know, I think that there are gas stations that are still coming into compliance with that, but um, we recognize that it's really important for a consumer to be able to tell what they're going to pay b pay with their method of payment before they come in and fill up their tank. Because as you described, it's not a good experience for a consumer to fill up their tank thinking that they're paying a certain amount, only to find out that they're actually paying a surcharge or a higher rate because they chose to use a credit card. So that is. Uh, required on the sign. We're working to make sure that gas stations are in compliance with that. Um, and I, we can certainly talk to you about any potential proposals to increase disclosure for the consumer. But as you know, we are generally in favor of increased disclosure, putting more information at the, the, at the, tips of the fingertips of the consumer. Now going back to the signs, a few years ago, uh, we passed legislation through mm -hmm. this committee that would allow for the LED um, mm -hmm. uh, road signs uh, to, to be legal to for, for, the, for the gas stations to be able to use. Have you seen an increase of those signs, or is there? I'd have to check with our inspectors. Certainly, we've promulgated rules implementing that law change, uh, and we've been working with the industry. So that I would, I would assume, uh, without hard data in front of me, that yes, the number of signs has of LED signs has gone up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, Council Merkel. Uh, so. Um, so who licensed the gas stations? You said DCA doesn't license gas stations. No, we don't. No, which agency licensed them? Uh, I'm not aware of other agencies' jurisdictions with gas stations. I can only speak to what we do, which is weights and measures law and local law and price posting and disclosures. Yeah. I'm under the impression, um, and again, it's not our jurisdiction, but I'm under the impression that there are a number of different regulatory bodies involved here, both at the state and federal level, because you are dealing with um, tanks that are installed underground. You are dealing with uh, substances that can be hazardous, that can that are flammable and explosive in some cases. Um, so 
I, I'm under the impression that there's a number of different regulatory bodies. I don't have a complete picture for you. What I can speak to is our jurisdiction. Well, can we find out who licensed uh, uh, gas stations, federal or state or a combined combination of them? Yeah, I think I think it is a combination of different licenses and permits that are required for different components of the business. Uh, we can follow up with you to get more information after the hearing. So you, you mentioned that your agency is not a uh, good agency to conduct a study about the uh, closure of uh, uh, gas stations. You know? So mm -hmm. which agency would you suggest to do this, uh, this kind of study, EDC or? I think EDC would be in, certainly be in the mix. Um, for when we start to have those discussions with you about what the best agency to conduct this study is. There are, are other agencies um, that the city could potentially assign this to. What we wanted to just ensure is that we have on the record that while we understand that this is certainly an issue of concern and we have experience that would be relevant to one piece of this story about why gas stations are closing, we think that uh, to get the complete picture, you need someone with expertise in macroeconomic trends in real estate um, and the kinds of things that a small business owner is thinking about when they dis when they think, do I want to continue operating this business or do I want to turn this um, this piece of property into something else or sell it to someone else? So we think that we it's going to require a process of looking at all the potential factors here, which is acknowledged by the bill, uh, and then determining who, uh, which agency or group of agencies are best placed. So, so do you have any recommendations on um, what, uh, what, what uh, the city can do to decrease the culture of gas stations? Because you are a consumer agency, right? That's right. So on behalf of the consumers, right? well, now we have a hard time to find gas stations. Mm -hmm. So uh, or sometimes when I drive, I'll be very cautious. I look at my the gas needle first. And so I don't want to drive too far. I feel at the gas first, you know? No one mm -hmm. wants to run out of gas, yeah. for sure. Uh, I mean, even in, in Queens, in my neighborhood, first of which is booming, but we see a, a, a closing, uh, uh, at least half the stations are closed in the last uh, 20 years. Mm -hmm. you know. So we do see a decrease of ga gas stations, and uh, what happens if they're all closed, and then we have to drive to New Jersey to go? <laughs> well, <laughs> to certainly, gas certainly we don't want to end up in a situation where we have to cross <laughs> state lines to get yeah. gas. Um, I think, that, as I said earlier, we're... We as an agency that believe that consumer that more consumer choice is generally better, um, but the my comments today and in, in the testimony reflect the fact that this is a complex issue and there's a lot of different factors at play here. So I think the as the council's bill recognizes, the best way to go about addressing it would be to first identify all those factors with the relevant stakeholders and experts, and then th think about um, what could be done to mitigate them. Well, my only explanation is that the real estate prices has gone up so, so much that sometimes it's not uh, it's, it's easier for the owner to just sell the property than, than run a gas station with all these regulations, you know? Yeah, I think, I think certainly the, the price of real estate is one factor that, yeah. that we talk about in our testimony, and that would be relevant to this discussion. Thank you, Mr. Casey. Yeah. Thank you, Council Member. Um, and <clears throat> so going back to the road signs, um, mm -hmm. Is so we passed a bill that would require all of these different price points to be posted, right? Or different price points people will be paying mm -hmm. depending on the method of their, uh, uh, of payments. Um, is there a reason why not all gas stations have these signs up yet, or I, is this is not being enforced? So we at uh, at this point we promulgated regulations uh, that changed the gas station requirements under the that law. Uh, at the beginning of the year. And so as we typically do, we've been going through an education process. I think um, I, I think the industry would be cautious about letting me speak for them um, as the regulator, but w what we hear is that these signs are quite expensive and they require uh, contracting out to install them typically. So the, I think it's, it's a process for a lot of these stations to figure out who they want to install their sign and to figure out how they're gonna figure to uh, fit that change into their budget. Um, so what I, what I can say is that we have had a very positive experience with gas station operators coming to us first and asking um, about the sign they want to purchase and want to install and saying, 
Is this going to, am I going to get in trouble for this? Does this com comply with everything? Um, and we can review that and tell them ahead of time, yes, this complies, or no, you might want to change some of this lettering, uh, or this isn't big enough. A and then th that saves them a lot of time and hassle and money um, trying to, to figure out what, what is compliant and what is not. So I think there's a lot of different pressures that impact a business owner's ability to come into compliance right away. Uh, so, and we've been, we recognize that, and we're working on, uh, on helping them get there. So currently you're, you're not actively enforcing, you're working with the industry to make sure That's right. people come to compliance. That's right. Okay. Uh, so there have there been any violations that have been given out that you're aware under of? That, um, under that specific yeah. law, I would have to get back to you, but we can look into that. The, I mean, the, the way that the, the law was set up, the penalty range clearly recognized that uh, this was intended to be enforcement focused on people who don't come into compliance even after being given a chance mm -hmm. to. So the, low, the, the penalties are, are lower on the low end, but quite high on the high end. And so we recognize the council's intent that there, was, uh, that there should be enforcement for people who are knowingly not fixing their sign, but an opportunity for people to uh, come into compliance otherwise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, so I don't, I don't really have any more questions, but I, I guess I'll, I'll just end the off, off with a statement. Um, you know, I, I just think it's important for the, to the city, uh, as, as you mentioned, for us to, to recognize this trend of, of, of these gas stations closing. Um, you know, gas stations do provide a vital service for, during Hurricane Sandy. Uh, when, we did, when we did lose access to gasoline, you know, it's created a lot of issues for a lot of New Yorkers uh, trying to get around. Um, and also, um, you know, when we do have fewer gas stations and less competition, we do see inflated prices. You know, in Manhattan, in, in, the, in the borough of Manhattan, you're paying maybe a dollar more than what you would pay in, in Brooklyn and Queens. Uh, and, um, you know, that also creates a problem for consumers. And just thinking about the future as well, I mean, the gas stations could, could be converted to um, charge electric vehicles. And uh, we know that we're making a shift here in the city or just globally in, in getting people to buy more electric vehicles. And, uh, you know, these spaces will be vitally important. Um, and, you know, we do recognize that it, it's, it's, it's a real estate issue, and I'm sure that maybe, you know, DCP will have to play a larger role in coming up of ways that we can uh, zone these, these spaces and, and protect the gas stations because of the service they provide for New Yorkers. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Member. Appreciate it. Is, that, is anyone here to testify? No? All right. Well, with that said, <laughs> this hearing is adjourned.